Well, today's video is all about potatoes, and as you know it, it is probably one of the most versatile vegetables out there. Plus, it's still relatively inexpensive to buy a bag of potatoes. I'm gonna be doing some with russets and some with Yukon Golds. These are gonna be delicious. I'm sure you're gonna love them. And if we haven't met before, my name is Ange. Welcome, and this is the Menu Made Kitchen. Okay, so for this first recipe I'm sharing with you, these are bacon and cheese mashed potato bites, and I am telling you, these are so delicious. They're perfect for like a little appetizer, or you can even make them as a side dish. Use up leftover mashed potatoes or just whip up a batch. We know how easy it is to make mashed potatoes. I think you're really gonna love these. Okay, so for our bacon and cheese mashed potato bites, I'm just gonna use this one single bowl here, and we're just gonna mix everything in here. So I'm gonna start by adding my egg because I kinda wanna like mix that up first before we add in the potato. And so we are using cooked mashed potatoes. So if you have leftover mashed potatoes, this is a great recipe for that. But it's also easy to kind of whip up mashed potatoes to make this recipe. And I apologize if you hear that obnoxious noise. My husband is blowing leaves right now and I waited as long as possible so that we could do this, but I can't wait any longer. All right, so I'm also gonna add in a quarter, about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. That looks pretty good. So we'll give this a little mix up first before we add in our potatoes. And then I'm gonna add in two cups of, like I said, cooked prepared mashed potatoes. So these are already seasoned. They have some butter in it. So I don't have to worry about seasoning the mashed potato bites because the potatoes already have what they need. Man, I am just clinking all around here. Okay, and then we're also gonna add in a quarter cup of cooked chopped up bacon. And then I'm gonna add in one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Now, if you really wanna make this rich, you could do like a sharp cheddar, that would be good. Or you could do pepper jack for a little spice. So I'm gonna get all of this mixed together and then I'll bring over my muffin tin and we'll start putting together our little potato bites. All right, so I have a 12 cup mini muffin tin here and I sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. I'm gonna use my little mini um, cookie scoop here just to make it easier. And we're just gonna fill up our little muffin tins. And when you get the potatoes in there, I kind of just push it down a little bit until you kind of have this level surface. And actually, this might make more than 12. It kind of looks like a lot of potatoes, but we'll see. So I'm gonna get these filled up and then we'll talk about baking times. Okay, so as you can see, I had to get my other little mini muffin tin. So I got about 20 little potato bites out of this. So we're gonna pop this into a 375 degree oven and I'm gonna bake these about 25 to 30 minutes. Obviously you want the potatoes to be nice and set and there'll be a little bit of golden brown on top and then we're gonna to top them with some fresh chives and then we get to taste them. Okay, are these not so adorable? Look how cute those are. So I think that these would be super fun during the holiday season because how many times do you make mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or you have multiple holiday parties? Leftover mashed potatoes. Okay, let's give it a try. I definitely have to have some sour cream on mine, but you don't have to put that on there. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Super creamy, like a mashed potato. You know what it reminds me of? Is like twice baked potato. When you add all the filling to a bowl and then put it back into the potato skins, that's what exactly what this tastes like. You get the little bacon bits in there. They're still crispy. Got a little bit of garlic powder, the cheese. So, so good. All right, so for my Mediterranean potato salad, I'm gonna start by getting the dressing mixed up. Although I did already cook the potatoes. I just peeled some yellow potatoes and then I cut them up into like one inch cubes. I put them in cold water with a little bit of salt and then boiled them about eight minutes. I definitely like them to be on the firmer side because you don't want them to fall apart once you put the salad together. So for our dressing, really simple, lemon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. So I'm gonna try and get about two tablespoons of lemon juice, maybe just a little bit more, because I definitely want there to be that lemon flavor. 
and I do not have a lemon squeezer. I only have this lime one, so it doesn't usually fit these lemons. Okay, well that's about a tablespoon. I'm gonna do this little quarter one here, just add a little bit more juice. So, okay, and then I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And then I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. We'll probably need a little more salt just because you know how potatoes are, they usually need more. But we'll put everything together and we can always add more. All right, in goes my little whisk ball. And then I'll get this shook up here. All right, dressing looks perfect. I'm just waiting for the potatoes to cool. I've already prepped all of my other ingredients and then we'll put the salad together. Potatoes are pretty much cooled. They're still like a touch warm, but I think that'll be good because the dressing will kind of absorb, or the potatoes will absorb the dressing better. All right, so I've got a quarter cup of sliced up red onion. I've got a half a cup of these little mini peppers that I sliced up. You can also do like a bell pepper. I also have a mixture of green and purple olives I've sliced in half. And I just like to buy these in the, um, ba not bakery section, the deli section at our grocery store because they're a lot more fresh than the jarred ones. We also have a half a cup of sliced cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna do a quarter cup of chopped up parsley. Lots of fresh ingredients, I love this. And this is a great recipe because you don't need like in season veggies. All of these things are year round. And then I have about three quarters teaspoon of oregano. And then I just picked off some thyme out in my garden. And this is about, about a teaspoon of thyme. So I'm not gonna even chop it up. I just thought it'd be really pretty and add kind of that little lemony flavor. Oregano goes in. All right, and then we're gonna add in all of our dressing. Oops, cheers. Okay, and I'm gonna use my spatula spoon here because I don't wanna mash uh, the potatoes or the tomatoes. I mean, you can use any kind of spoon you want, but if you have some kind of a spatula spoon, I think that would work really well. Give everything a toss. Doesn't it look so beautiful? What a fun side dish. This would be great even for the holidays to take. Something that's a little bit lighter and more fresh, not so heavy with all the creams and cheeses. Although I do love that during the holidays too. Why am I even talking about the holidays? It's only September. This looks perfect. I'm gonna give it a little taste. I wanna make sure I don't need any more salt. Okay, not only are the potatoes cooked perfectly, but I think that that is salted perfectly. So what I do have to do is, I'm gonna refrigerate this for about 30 minutes before we taste it, just to make sure all the ingredients have a chance to kind of marry together. I mean, you could eat this right away. It is delicious right now, but I think it'll be even better if we let it set. So we're gonna get this in the fridge and then we'll come back and taste it together. Okay, we are ready to taste this. I added a little bit more pepper to mine because I like my pepper. If you've spent any time on here, you know that. All right, gotta get kind of a little bit of everything. Definitely want an olive. Those potatoes just melt in your mouth. They're so creamy. They're perfectly done. And then that burst of lemon and the salty olives and the juicy tomatoes and the red onion. This is a fantastic potato salad recipe. And I love having another option for an easy side dish, something that's kind of fresh and healthy, perfect dish to take to somebody's house or just make on a weeknight dinner. <laughs> I clearly cannot keep things on my plate when I'm doing this. All right, let's try that again. You definitely gotta make this salad. It's super, super yummy. So for our French onion potatoes, I'm gonna mix up our sauce ingredients first before we add the potatoes. The first thing we're gonna add is one 10 ounce can of French onion soup. We're also gonna add in one whole packet of golden mushroom soup mix. And if you haven't seen this in the grocery store, that's what it looks like. So there's the onion soup mix and then there's the golden. And the only difference between golden and regular soup mix is the golden is made with chicken broth and a little bit of milk. So it has a really mild onion flavor. I am so excited about this recipe. I have never made a French onion potato 
dish before, so I think it's gonna be really good, and I did a few changes that I think are gonna be yummy. I'm also gonna add in a third cup of melted butter. Gotta have some butter with potatoes. And we have some seasonings. I've got some black pepper, one teaspoon, and two teaspoons of fresh thyme. So I'm just gonna whisk this stuff together first. And then we'll add in our potatoes. It already smells so yummy. Okay, and then I'm using russet potatoes for this recipe. And I just peeled them and obviously put or cut them into little cubes. And I did about two pounds, which equaled about seven medium-sized potatoes. I also have a half a cup of chopped up yellow onion. All right, and you know what's gonna happen. We're gonna toss all of this together. I mean, this definitely reminds me of like a side dish that you would have for the holidays. Rich and comforting. I think it's gonna be really good. So now I'm gonna scooch this over here. We're gonna bring down our nine by 13 inch baking dish and basically add all of this to our dish. All right, so I'm gonna spread this out to kind of a layer here. And then I'm gonna give it a little shake because you can kind of see that the liquid is kind of pooling at that corner there. And obviously as it bakes, it'll all come together, but just to be sure. Okay, a little shake. All right, this is ready to go into the oven. I'm gonna cover it with foil and we're gonna bake it at 375 for 40 minutes. And then I'll take the foil off, put it back into the oven. We'll bake it another 30 minutes and then we'll add some cheese. So I will see you back here when it's time to add the cheese. Okay, so this has been baking for about an hour and it smells absolutely delicious. I'm just gonna take my spoon and give it a good stir just to make sure that we can kind of combine the sauce and it'll kind of thicken up a little bit. Okay, my camera stopped. So we're adding two cups of shredded Fontina cheese. This cheese is so creamy. You can also do Gruyere, but Gruyere was like $3 more and they're very close in flavor. They're both kind of nutty. I really like how Fontina melts. So we'll sprinkle this on and then I'm gonna pop this back into the oven for another 10 minutes until the cheese is melted and then we're gonna top it with just a couple fresh herbs and give it a taste. I'm so excited about this. You are the first to try this with me. It smells so delicious in my kitchen. I just cannot even express like how cozy and yummy it smells in here. So I added a little bit of chopped up chives and parsley to the top. Definitely optional, but again, I love adding fresh herbs and plus I think it makes it look a little prettier. So, okay, here we go. Actually, it's super hot. This is amazing. These French onion potatoes, oh man. This is definitely gonna become a new favorite dish to have for the holidays. <laughs> and I know that we're doing potato dishes right now, but you know, the holidays are coming up, so we gotta be prepared. And these would be perfect for that time of year. But a side dish for any kind of meal would be great with a roasted chicken, grilled chicken, steak, pork. So, so yummy. I'm really excited for you to try this. Okay, so for our herb and lemon melting pot potatoes, we're gonna use a bag of golden potatoes today, so like the Yukon Golds. And I have a pound here, I've peeled them, and then I slice them one inch thick. You definitely want your potatoes nice and thick. We'll add these straight to the bowl, and then we gotta season them. I have two tablespoons of melted butter. I also have two tablespoons of olive oil. And then for our seasonings, I have a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. We have three quarters teaspoon kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then for the herb part of it, I've got two tablespoons of chopped up fresh rosemary and two teaspoons of fresh thyme. You can definitely use dried herbs for this recipe. You'll just want to reduce it by half. So if a recipe calls for two tablespoons of fresh herbs, you'll use one tablespoon of dry herbs because dry herbs are a lot more potent. Okay, and that is it for this step. I'm just gonna give these a good toss. Okay, so let's talk about melting pot potatoes. Have you ever had those before? 
So you wanna make sure to roast them in a super hot oven. And then we're actually gonna add, you can add chicken broth or vegetable broth, but we're gonna do vegetable broth towards the end of the cooking time. And that'll kind of steam them and infuse flavor into the potato. And they're just super creamy and fluffy potato-y on the inside, which is why you want the potato so thick. And then they maintain kind of that crispy exterior. So these are gonna be delicious. Kind of fancy little side dish, but really easy. Okay, I'm gonna grab my sheet pan. Okay, a couple things. I have a large sheet pan here. You don't want to use a glass pan because we have the oven temperature at 500 degrees. It could crack the, your dish. So make sure that you're using a metal um, baking dish. Make sure also to get all of that herby, buttery goodness out of there, which is why I love using my spatula. Okay, so I'm going to lay out my potatoes here in a single layer. You want them kind of spread apart so they each have a chance to do their own thing on their in their own little space. So they get nice and crispy. And then when we add the chicken broth, the steam will kind of work around it. Okay, again, I have my oven set at 500 degrees. We're gonna roast these for 30 minutes and I'm gonna flip them halfway through. And then we're gonna add a couple more ingredients. I am gonna be garnishing with fresh parsley to just drive home more of that herby flavor. These are gonna be amazing. I have obviously flipped the potatoes on both sides. This is the second side. It's nice and crispy. So I'm now gonna add three quarters cup of vegetable broth. You can also do chicken broth. Just be careful because this pan is like smoking hot. So when I add this, it's probably gonna sizzle and steam. Not too bad actually. Had a little chance to, calm, to cool down because I had to set up my camera. And then I've got a half of a lemon juice here. I'm just really gonna squeeze it right over the top or you can mix it in with your broth to give it that little bit of lemony flavor. All right, so we're gonna put this back into the oven. We'll let it go about 10 minutes. Most of the liquid's gonna evaporate from the pan and then obviously you want the potatoes to be nice and tender. I'm gonna top it with some parsley and then we get to taste it. Okay, check these out. Aren't those so beautiful? They got nice and crispy. They almost look like scallops because of the way that they're cut. All right, we're gonna try one. I can already tell. It's just gonna be so delicious. All right, here we go. Heavens gracious. This is probably the best I've ever had. These turned out like the inside is perfection. It's almost like not mashed potato texture, but it is super, super creamy. And then that little bit of crust on the outside just makes it so yummy. I wish that that would focus automatically. Okay, look at that. Oh my gosh. These are gonna be perfect with our steak tonight or make some grilled chicken or fish. I mean, these melting pot potatoes will go good with anything and so easy to throw together. And your house is gonna smell amazing while they're roasting too. So there's that bonus. So yummy. You gotta try these if you've never had melting pot potatoes. You're gonna love this recipe. Okay, well, I hope this video gave you some inspiration and just new ideas for using a bag of potatoes. Don't forget all the recipe links can be found in the descriptions. And if you're new here, I'd love for you to be part of my YouTube family. So make sure to subscribe. I hope you have a really blessed week and we will see you next time.